Hello viewers, Super GT here. This turned out to be a fairly frantic and chaotic race. It's Daily Race B, Laguna Seca. Group 3 cars, I've gone for this, the Nissan GTR. Let's see how this race pans out. Now quite ominously, just behind us, we have, yes, you're having it. So um, we've got to be really, really careful that that guy does not get anywhere near us. And so, we must attack, we must be on the front foot. So this is quite, as I say, a, f a frantic, frenetic race, however you want to put it. Five laps around Laguna Seca, it's not very long to get the work done. But uh, this track, I would say Group 3 cars, this is about as fast as a car you want to get around here because it's quite a tight and twisty circuit. And so racing anything quicker can be a little bit too fast for this track. But I think they have done IndyCar around here in the past but um, IndyCar isn't in this game, so that has zero relevance to my point. Anyway, coming up the hill, right up behind the Porsche now. Looking up the inside, we're going to go for this move in towards the apex. Tiny bit of contact there, and we have a bit of a, a weird scuffle. And yes, you're having it goes through from third to first in one fell swoop. So I've gone from second up into, well, second. Uh, no change there. And now I have to really gather my race up once again. Uh, so that wasn't an ideal moment. And now we kind of just have to regroup, make sure we don't get overtaken, and just really settle into this second position. So the guy behind, very, very close indeed. Porsche is the dominant car, I would say. It's the car that most people are gravitating towards. He's gone up the inside in towards turn one, which is officially turn two, but I'm calling it turn one as uh, we managed to rebuff that overtake attempt around the outside and stay in a solid P2. So still very much under pressure here. Really need to uh, establish some sort of uh, a rhythm here and get away from this guy as he is very much posing a big threat at this point in time. Um, so as we head up the hill, this is a very good opportunity to try and do that. This upcoming left hand, a very fast and fearsome corner a little bit wide are we far away enough to prevent an overtake i think so looking at the radar we focus on our breaking point here into the corkscrew lap number two carrying a lot of speed in and now i sense we're back on the attack trying to reclaim the lead of the race down the hill we go through the left preparing for the right moving over fully to the left hand side making the most of the camber midway through the corner looking towards the inside not quite close enough to go for it but very, very close indeed on the brakes, as is the car behind, as is the car behind them. So a very, very good battle here for P1 between four cars. Across the line we go to begin lap number three, and to my surprise, this guy does not defend the inside, and that is going to be me up into the race lead once again. As um, I say once again, I was in the lead for about 0.1 seconds, uh, so technically it is a true statement. But uh, pulling away now, this lap is quite an important one. Let's try to establish a gap and get towards some safety. Yes, you're having it. Has, well, he succumbed to his own name and uh, the gravel had his way with him. As uh, he spins outside of the top eight now. And uh, that was not an ideal moment for his poor soul. So the gap has opened up quite a lot on this lap. Moving up now to 1.1 seconds, which is a fairly safe margin, I would say, around this kind of circuit. Uh, certainly not in the slipstream, and to be fair, this track doesn't really have much in the way of straights, and therefore slipstream isn't particularly uh, effective around a track like this. So rounding out lap number three, gap at 1.3, which is a good margin. And uh, that would be uh, pretty much that race done. 122.2, so setting an okay lap there. Lap number four. By lap number five, it was quite a convincing victory. Let's take a look at that replay of that incident on lap number one at the corkscrew. I feel like I was on the inside. I tried to leave space. Kind of just turned in. I was as far to the left as I realistically could have been. Anymore, and I was in the gravel. I kind of already was in the gravel. But there you go. It's just one of those moments, I suppose racing incident that guy goes flying through the middle 
and um, I suppose it all ended well in the end. Now race number two, I didn't change my qualifying time, didn't improve upon it and so a couple of quicker players entered the lobby and I was shuffled down to P6 on the grid so quite a lot more work to be done from here. Winning from second is not too tricky and you have to overtake one car but from here if my math serves me correctly you have to overtake five cars and that is a different and it is a bigger number so this should be quite a lot harder let's see what we can do there was a bit of lag there but uh, thankfully no one ends up in the shadow realm as a result right up behind this guy and I, I really went for this move here being quite aggressive thankfully no contact made and uh, that kind of put me on the back foot here against the Aston Martin just behind through the fast sweeping left up the hill then towards the corkscrew and uh, we're going to see a big mistake from the car in front as they brake slightly too late perhaps I mean uh, what may, maybe even like 10 20 meters too late into the back of the Porsche that's going to be two positions for free and I'll say thank you very much now once again like the previous race it's about establishing the position we are on the line our tires are in good condition and so we can kind of just focus now on trying to move forward. The car behind is close. The Aston Martin followed me through, but uh, by the end of lap number two, catching up quite quickly with my fellow Nissan GTR user, Melvin R34, trying to seek out an overtaking opportunity. And around here, as we kind of mentioned at the beginning of this video, this is quite a tight, twisty track. And in group three cars, everything feels tighter and twistier. And so trying to get an overtake done cleanly is difficult. Uh, turn one is the best place to do it. And that is coming up right now. So let's see if we can do it from here. It's going to be quite a long way back. There's a small touch there. I'm not going to try and overtake here uh, as a result of that. Uh, so we're going to have to settle back into fourth. But all we can do really is to try to put as much pressure on as possible I sense that my next overtaking opportunity comes after the exit of this corner but uh, actually the guy in front gets a really good run and I'm nowhere near close enough on this occasion to go for this move here as this corner can sometimes serve up a good overtaking opportunity the next chance comes into the corkscrew and so I need to get this corner correct get a good exit and that will give me a chance so very very close indeed is it going to be close enough? Not much in the way of straight, as, I, as we mentioned before the corner. Looking towards the inside, trying to create some sort of opening, trying to pressure this guy into a mistake. At the moment, he's driving well. He's not making that mistake and not quite able to force the issue. Still staying close, though. We have two laps after this one to try to create this opening. Breaking on the freeboard into the final corner. We need to get a good exit here rotating the car nicely through the apex and on the power I sense we're closer this time around than I was on the previous lap and I'm about to pull off an overtake that I was actually extremely pleased with as we go late on the brakes the space opened up we don't overshoot we hit the apex nicely and pull it off trying to catch up with p2 well I kind of did but it was too end, uh, too late by the end of this race as uh, we cross the line in a solid third, I suppose. Now let's take a look at my fastest lap in qualifying. Uh, so we can give you a bit of advice about how to get some uh, good lap times around here. Now I'm using, again, using the Nissan GTR, which is a good car, but I think the Porsche is the quicker one overall. I do quite like this uh, Nissan. Breaking on this white... Um, line on the right hand side in towards turn one carrying the speed into the apex accelerating out of here in second gear as early as possible back over to the left and i actually understeer here braking and turning a little bit too hard missed the apex and you can see the ghost actually pulls away by about a tenth maybe a tenth and a half here it's really about getting close to that sausage curb getting on the power as early as possible to carry the speed through onto the straight looking for the three board on the right braking on it two gears down then rotating back on the power quite early you actually really carry a lot of speed through there then this corner is really difficult looking for that second board just committing quite early and carrying as much speed as possible using as much of the track width on the exit as you can and then here breaking just before the second board which is the three board 
as we really carry a lot of speed. It's amazing how much speed you can carry through the corkscrew. If you get the line dead right and stay in the correct gear, you can carry so much speed and gain so much time if you get that one dead right. Making the most of the camber through the penultimate corner, breaking on the three board, carry that speed in towards the apex, into first gear, back to second, onto the power, maximizing the track width on the exit. And I've definitely gained compared to the Ghost, and so it's going to be an improvement for 121.1. And that's about a second away from the lap record around here. And it put me, as you can see, on pole position. And so the challenge now in this race is really to establish, once I've, uh, once again, as I've mentioned in the previous couple of races, you kind of just have to establish your position nice and early. So this guy is going to try and attack, presumably. So I just need to make sure that I can just pull off enough of a gap to make sure that he's not close enough and therefore cannot spring a surprise or an overtake or even a mistake that could compromise my race uh, so just pulling away is the best option uh, it sounds easier than it is to actually do though of course but we're going to kind of treat this as a practice session we've just put in a couple of quick clean laps in qualifying so there's no real reason why i shouldn't be able to just do it again here in the race conditions again carrying the speed through very fast difficult corner that one is probably the one that's most tricky to get correct and nail consistently around the Laguna Seca lap into the corkscrew first lap carrying that speed almost wider the track limit but just keeping it within and down the hill we go a little bit wider the apex but carrying the speed nicely back to the left maximizing the track width on the entry and maximizing track width is a key component of a good lap time around this circuit given its narrow nature that's lap one, and it was quite a good lap actually, pulling away, gap above a second. By the halfway through lap number three, the gap was four seconds. I made this mistake, and this is a mistake you really don't want to make, as um, getting dirty tyres across the sand at this track really compromises your lap. Uh, so I lost about two seconds from the mistake, and then, actually no, I lost about three seconds. I managed to hang on for the win. So good stuff there. Now this guy in the chat suggested that I try to go from last to first to give everyone a chance, okay. So I thought it's time to unleash the Albon once again. It's that account that you've seen, but I haven't made too many videos on this account actually. So with a Williams livery on the car, it's time to go from the back of the pack, 16th out of 16. And the frustrating thing about starting this far back is that you have to start around the final corner and as you can see, Already, the final four people on the grid actually start quite a long way back as a result of that. So now there's going to be a lot of work to be done. First and foremost, trying to fight our way through past this nicely adorned Renault in the classic Mild 7 livery, looking very nice indeed. I was looking for this move here, and again, I think you already need to be alongside to really get a move done properly into that corner. And uh, I was a bit too far behind, so I'm going to back out here. I'm going to try again and see where we can make this move. As uh, he has a bit of a moment there, I'm going to chop over to the left hand side. As um, the Jedi 05 says hi, thank you very much uh, for that message, it really means a lot. And also, hi. Anyway, back to the race. As you can see ahead, someone off onto the sand. The sand realm has claimed another victim is about to claim one more here on the exit of i believe turn 10 i think that's turn 10 but i need to confirm that for absolute certain now this is where this race gets quite frantic and frenetic as described lots of cars very close in contention lots of porsches here pretty much everyone going for the porsche I tried to chop to the left here against the gold card didn't quite work and we're going to make the move on the inside and for a moment here, I just want to I want to pause this. You might notice that there's a car grazing the barrier. And I say grazing, it actually went in it quite hard. Now take a look at the car at the very front of this little group here. It's going to deviate from the recommended path by turning left a little bit too soon, almost <laughs> colliding, going through the gap, and then having a very high-speed meeting with barrier. And uh, I, I really would love an explanation that one but uh, it's very strange behavior indeed as I actually run this guy wide he's called Barry and I actually almost ran him into Barry R 
So quite a shameful behaviour here from Alex Albon. Putting up now towards P9, he doesn't get a good run on the exit of that turn, so we're going to put up to the left-hand side and quite easily here claim P9. Up behind the Swede now, GTS Racing. Let's see where we can get this overtake done. Heading down the hill, sometimes can be an opportunity. The car in front does need to go quite wide on the entry, which has not occurred on this occasion. How about into the final corner? Fairly close. We could go for this move, but he covers it off. So I'm going to take the normal racing line. Try the old switcheroo. And it's worked to perfection. Now it's a drag race between the two of us. Across the start line we go. And that's me up into P8. With three laps remaining. Going to cover the inside here. As we have the Porsche of a very close company immediately behind. And so just want to play it safe. And there we go, protected the position. One lap later, it looks like the Irish driver there, who suggested I should start from the back, is now going to go to the back after some sort of incident. And uh, here we go, in P7, end of lap number four. The progress has been pretty good, especially when you lose so many seconds at the beginning by starting around the final corner. Looking up the inside, this is going to be quite a decisive move. Shifting down a gear to get that rotation on the apex. Getting the move done quite nicely. Initially I thought I overcooked it, but not quite. Now, lap 5, seeking P5. Let's see if we can do it. The German running quite wide on the exit. I'm going to cover the inside. I'm going to try and keep him narrow to get a good little switcheroo going here. Is it going to work? I mean, I could force the issue and stay on the inside here. This could be quite difficult. Thank you, we were just going to do it. Hitting the bollard on the inside. And it's not going to be kind to our momentum on the exit. The German's going to come straight back at me and come back up the inside in towards the corkscrew. So good fighting here between the two of us. Good, uh, good battling. Space being afforded and respect being shown. Always good to see. Heading towards the penultimate corner. Can we get a good line through here to spring a surprise into the final corner of the race? Not quite close enough. The car behind actually goes for a move. Doesn't quite come off. And so it's going to be the infamous P6, sixth position. Now, I wanted to set myself another challenge here, setting a qualifying lap and then protecting the position that we start with the worst car I have in my garage, which isn't many. I only have three different cars. I'm going to go for the Supra GT500. This is the Antisocial Social Club GT500 Toyota, a car which I have not driven. It only has precisely zero miles on the clock. Well, actually, 0 0.03 as we begin the race. So, I have not driven the car. I've jumped into this race with zero knowledge of this car, other than it is very pink. Uh, all we can do is learn it as quickly as possible and hope that that's enough and hope that it's actually a somewhat decent car so most people behind going with the porsche the uh the go-to car for this race but we're going to try and learn in this thing whatever the hell it is it's the well, i mean it's the classic gran turismo toyota gt500 an iconic car when you have the the classic the famous castrol livery but today we're running the pink livery which was i think it was a pre-order bonus or something from when the game came out i, I can't even remember I, it's a car that sat in my garage and i've never really used it and so we're going to try and uh, put it to some good use it's a shame that a car would just sit in a garage even if it is just a digital garage and it actually has no bearing on anything really at all so here lap number two and uh, this French driver came to the fore as my main challenger. And so, after learning this car, it actually turns out this car is actually quite stable. It's quite easy to drive. It just understeers quite a lot. And that's compared to even normal. And now the Frenchman gets a good run here. I forget to defend the inside early enough. And I try to leave space at the last moment. And if anything, I just screw up my own corner. So that was actually really bad defending. I'm now going to have to do a bit more defending by moving to the left, protecting the inside for the uh, corkscrew up against my fellow Brit. And thankfully it was, it was successful on that occasion. But overall, 
Um, towards the end, I wasn't really able to keep up the pace with the leader. This car, it was a solid drive car, uh, car to drive, but it just lacked, um, I don't know, I don't know what the word is, magic. It kind of exists, uh, but nothing much more. We finished in second, and um, it was not such a bad result. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Goodbye.